They're the secrets of ancient Egypt, which for thousands of years lay submerged beneath the Mediterranean. The treasures belong to two sunken cities, which were thought to be the stuff of myth. Now the artifacts dredged up from the ruins go on show for the first time at the British Museum. Here's our arts correspondent, Brenda Imanis. Submerged underwater, a granite sculpture of the god Happy and a striking pharaoh. These majestic underwater discoveries are about to become a major box office draw. Buried deep in silt and clay at the mouth of the River Nile, these fascinating artefacts from lost Egyptian cities were discovered and are now on show at the British Museum. In the 1990s, maritime archaeologist Frank Godio began investigations that led to these great finds. The once magnificent Egyptian cities of Tonis Heraklion and Canopus, buried under the sea. Canopus and Tonis Heraklion are huge sites. We uh, started excavations there, but I would assess that we haven't excavate more than 5% of those two sites in 20 years. Thus, I presume that we will need several centuries to go ahead with those projects and to finish them, you know. It's the British Museum's first major exhibition of underwater archaeology, and as well as showing the treasures from these once great cities, it tells the story of how two powerful ancient civilizations, Egypt and Greece, interacted during significant periods in their history. We know that Tony Siracleon and Nocrates used to work together in the collection of taxes on imported and exported goods, and this royal decree actually talks us about this taxation. By the 8th century AD, the sea had reclaimed the cities where they lay undiscovered for over a thousand years. The two cities are lying under 8 to 5 meters of water, which is not deep, but they are covered by 1 to 3 meters of sediment. This is why they had never been discovered before. These amazing artefacts sit alongside collections from Egyptian institutions and important objects from the British Museum, bringing the extraordinary story of these lost cities to life. Brenda Imanis, BBC London News.